I'm Maddie. Have you ever considered if birds get tired flying? We humans have an endurance limit. Exercising for long periods of time is exhausting, but do birds feel fatigued too? Hang on, I, I know what you're going to do. You'll need to exercise for the entire length of this video just to prove how amazing birds are. Yeah. Great. Well then, a female bar-tailed godwit was tracked flying non-stop for eight days, covering 7,145 miles in its migration from Alaska to New Zealand. All of this without any stop to rest or refuel. The truth is, after such a flight, birds do get tired, and in fact, some never make it to their destination due to chronic fatigue. But this is in the minority, and migrating birds do everything they can in their power to ensure that this doesn't happen. Firstly, before a long-haul flight, they begin a serious weight-gaining program. In the two to three weeks leading up to a migration, some species can double their weight in fat. Keep eating, boys! Fat is not only lighter and less bulky than protein and carbohydrates, it's also nine times more energy dense. And stepping up for such a marathon takes guts, literally. To keep up with the enormous influx of pre-flight food, the bird's digestive organs expand and the cells of their stomach swell. This helps them to process the huge quantities of food and build denser, thicker flight muscles. The pectoral muscles of the red knot enlarge by 40% before its 2,000 mile migration. And just before it takes off, it has no more need to pile on the pounds, so its digestive organs just shrink back to normal size. Migrating birds also make behavioural changes. Solitary birds often come together to fly in a flock to help protect them from predators. And it's thought to increase their flight efficiency. By measuring heart rates, researchers in France have finally proved that pelicans use 11 to 14% less energy when flying together than if flying in isolation. Flying in a V formation allows following birds to glide more, flap less, and therefore save energy. To burn minimal fuel, migrating birds will also exploit the winds to their favour. They will wait for the wind direction to shift so they can catch a ride on the air currents. They may also change altitude so as to find the best wind conveyor belt and hold on for the ride. One of the biggest problems associated with endurance exercise is not getting enough rest. Trust me, a songbird who's migrating over the sea can't simply land on the water to rest its wings. It's likely to drown. However, they will grab onto anything they can to rest up. Oil rigs, sailboats, and even trawler fleets are used by migrating birds so they can get that much needed rest. On the other hand, the swift almost never touches down. In fact, if it lands on flat ground, its wings are so long in comparison with the rest of its body that it can't take off again. They are thought to remain on the wing for years at a time, and it's assumed that they can actually sleep during flight. No one's invented a machine that's small enough or with built-in wings to take the necessary recordings, so it hasn't actually been proven. However, it has been assumed that they enter short-wave sleep, which is different from regular REM sleep, because one half of the brain rests while the other stays awake, so they maintain some sort of control. After a long migration, birds contain high levels of the stress-related hormone cortisol, and their flight muscles show serious signs of fatigue and exertion. Rather than a simple repair, their immune system can dismantle the flight muscles and rebuild them. The only downside is that this takes time. So after a long migration, many species will fly relatively short distances while they recover. Some waterfowl can stop flying entirely and they replace all of their feathers at the same time. So birds definitely do get tired of flying, but considering some of them fly halfway across the world, it's impressive they even make it at all. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you soon on Earth Unplugged, if I'm ever allowed off this thing. Anyone? Anyone? Can I get off? Hello and welcome to Zoo La La. So why is it that bats don't get dizzy upside down? It's pretty odd that any animal would want to hang upside down like this. I've been here moments and it's pretty uncomfortable, but bats seem to love it. 